Hello, everyone. Welcome back to yet another forecast. My name is Evan Freiberger, and this is the United States from space. And as you can see, we do have a low pressure system starting to move across the Great Lakes right now. This is going to bring a little bit of snowfall over here for parts of Wisconsin going into Michigan, also into parts of the Northeast as well. We're going to be watching out for that potential. Another thing that this storm is going to kind of help to usher in is a little bit of moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico up into the Central Plains. We're going to be watching out for the threat uh, for severe weather really in in this area of the country, potentially a little bit further to the north, we'll have to see how much moisture return we get out of that storm. And we continue to see an atmospheric river set up over here uh, into the Pacific Northwest, bringing in some moisture, rain, wind, and a lot of snow for the Sierra in the Cascades. So, man, I really feel like I'm making the same forecast every single day at this point, <laughs> to be honest. And also, just to clear something up, I know you guys are noticing I got a little bit of something happening right here. I had a weird dream last night, and I kind of vaguely remember trying to block something coming towards my face it was either like a punch or whatever i don't really know but regardless i woke up in the middle of the night and uh, the last thing i felt before i woke up was this so i think i like put my hand to like block something in my dream and then ended up scratch or scratching my face so <laughs> not, not not exactly 100 sure what happened there kind of like what's going to happen uh with the weather across the united states but we can look at the models and try to figure it out let's go ahead and get right into it so here's our clipper system System. It's already brought a little bit of snow to Michigan. A little bit more is to come on the backside of that. And then by the time this moves off to the east into the northeast of the United States, you're going to see that as we get into tonight, we're going to see a little bit more snow kind of develop over here, potentially in the northeastern corner of Ohio into northern Pennsylvania. It's eventually going to spread across almost the entirety of the northeast going into the taser portion of Pennsylvania, also into Massachusetts, Connecticut and Rhode Island as well. We're really not expecting too much snow out of this, but but some folks could get some, you know, decent amounts. We'll go over that in just a second. But, you know, what we're looking at right now is around 5 a.m. on the 24th. So that's Christmas Eve. And then eventually we're going to slowly see that little area of snow kind of evaporate out of our hair here as we move into further into the Christmas Eve portion. And then let's go ahead and kind of look at some of the snowfall totals here and see if we could see if you're going to be happy or sad. And as you can see, we do have a decent amount of snow uh, kind of really in this pocket, about one to two inches, maybe getting up to three inches possible, a little bit further up to the north in northern Michigan. Also moving back over here into the northeast, you can see we have a couple pockets here of some heavier snow possible, anywhere from three, two to one to two inches back over here, and then maybe four to five inches inches in this pocket lower elevations getting a little bit lower higher elevations getting a little bit higher which can't really completely rule out anywhere from a couple of inches up to maybe even seven, eight, nine inches of snow being possible there. Now, at around the same time that that snowstorm is happening up in the northeast, we're going to have some stuff happening down here in the central plains. This is going to kind of be our first warm up event here uh, for the severe weather that's going to be coming into the central plains and the southeast. And we're going to have a little bit of instability coming in with this storm. And eventually, we should start to see as we go into Christmas eve at around 5 6 a.m some showers across the area maybe some little bit of pockets of thunderstorms over there near oklahoma city little rock north of dallas but as we go into the evening we're going to expect the coverage of, of thunderstorms to increase and maybe even that severe weather risk to also increase with that as time we get into 6 p.m we've got a couple of storms out here that we're going to have to be watching all the way from north of houston all the way up in the dallas north of colleen area and that's going to be spreading off to the east eventually into louisiana as we go throughout the day. Looking at our surface base cape, we have plenty of instability for these storms. We get about 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram, at least according to the HRRR. One of the things that's going to be limiting the severe potential, though, is the lack of lower level shear here. Not a whole lot of forcing. These storms are going to kind of struggle to get started. But in terms of spin, we're really not talking about much of that either. As we go up into the upper atmosphere, you can also see that the winds are relatively weak up there as well. So definitely not a loaded gun environment, but there is a possibility for some damaging winds and hail with this event. And as we push this later into the night on Christmas Eve, by the time we get to around 11 p.m., we could be seeing an organized line of thunderstorms potentially with some severe storms within that extending all the way from Shreveport 
Resort down into San Antonio, approaching Houston, most likely by the time that we get to around 2 a.m. But after 2 a.m., we're really going to see these storms struggle really everywhere within this region here. Maybe still some thunderstorms as we move into Christmas morning, closer to the coast there for Louisiana. But most folks after this point aren't really going to see too much out of this storm. Let's kind of extend our models here to see what happens a little bit further into the future. This is the NAM 12K model. And first, we're going to be looking at the storm food just to see how much is left as we go into the next day here. And as you can see, it's just not a whole lot. Just not a whole lot at all. And then as you can see, let's move into the 27th. We're just now kind of getting into our range of the next storm that's coming in after this little storm here in the central plains we do have a little bit of a signal here looks like the nam's coming in not too hot here a little bit low on the moisture but we're still in the instability but we're still not in the peak day heating so let's go over to the gfs and see if we can get uh, a new update on what's going to be happening here so yeah the gfs surprisingly is still kind of on a downtrend here uh really not seeing a whole lot of instability here but as you get a little bit more of that lower level shear kind of coexisting with this lower amounts of cape you can still get the potential for tornadoes you know when you get that uh storm relative velocity kind of increase with some of these storms you can also get an increase of buoyancy and that's kind of the whole point of instability is to provide buoyancy so the air parcels can rise and you can see those big towering cumulonimbus clouds the lightning and the hail and sometimes potentially tornadoes so even though it's a little bit of a low cape environment i wouldn't completely rule out tornadoes at least on the gfs's solution here as we go into the 26th at 9 p.m. But and as you can see, we also have a big old line of thunderstorms all the way from Houston all the way up into southern Missouri as well. And as we move into the 27th, the atmosphere tries to recharge, but it doesn't really do it. It does a great job. You can see most of our precipitation is over here to the right side. And then eventually on the back side of this, we get a big old intrusion of moisture behind it. And that's going to be going into the 28th. And so a little bit of a dying storm on the 27th. Then going into the 28th, the GFS is saying we might have enough moisture moisture back up in here to have another severe weather threat as i push this forward let's see if any of these storms kind of convect at least on the gfs yeah a decent area here uh down into the southeast going from louisiana all the way up into mississippi and tennessee where we could see the chances for some severe weather and again that moisture and that instability really isn't going to stick around for too long after this and we're really going to start to see this storm kind of dissipate as we go into the 29th at around 9 a.m and then it just kind of becomes some light showers there for the the east coast but i I wouldn't be surprised if we just get a little bit more moisture in the East Coast. We should we could see a maybe another severe weather threat. But for right now, that's a little bit uncertain. Now, looking at the latest information here on our severe weather outlooks, we can see that we do have some thunderstorms expected today uh, over here near Oklahoma City, down there near Houston. And then over here on day two, we have a marginal risk for severe weather down here near Houston, Austin, Colleen, Dallas. It looks like we're also going to have a little bit of a tornado threat a little bit further down to the south near Houston. So got to watch out for that. Damaging winds are also going to be present, but it's a low chance for that. And also same thing with the hail. But definitely all those things are technically possible into a severe level. So we can be talking about 60 mile per hour winds, one inch hail and the chances, small chances for tornadoes. As we go into day three, we don't have a severe weather risk really prog. That's going to be on the 26th. Not really, uh, I mean, on the 25th, sorry, not really, uh, you know, seeing too much happen there. That instability really hasn't come back in. I wouldn't be surprised maybe to see a marginal risk near the coast, but uh, for now, it's a, a general thunderstorm risk. And then beyond this, uh, we do sometimes get slight risks, you know, on the day four, day five, day six, day seven period. But we're just still, we, we just don't have enough confidence on this next event to really be issuing those right now so the spc hasn't done that uh, and i agree with it you know even though we're getting closer still don't have a uh, a whole lot of confidence there but uh regardless if you know we do get a little bit more moisture up to the north which some models are indicating is a possibility we could be looking for uh, our first little bit more widespread severe weather threat in a while i know this is this last time and it didn't really happen and it might not happen this time sometimes the models you know they show a signal and then they fall apart so and i will tell you we're uh, we're still in that range where these uh, storms could definitely fall apart so uh just keep that in mind but uh, i'll be watching it and once we get closer and we get those higher resolution models in, we'll have some more information. But yeah, after the 27th and the 28th, these storms kind of move off to the east, continuing to try to cause some severe weather. And we're going to continue. Uh, I mean, well, as you can see, some rain's going to be spreading up there to northeast. Not talking about a whole lot of snow or really anybody out of this storm. Unless we get a little bit more cooler air on the backside, then we can maybe be talking about some extra snow over there near Michigan going into the you know eastern Great Lakes region. But uh, our main kind of focus is going to be over 
we're here. You know, if, you know, a whole lot of severe weather doesn't happen and that snowstorm is over at this point. Uh, our main focus is going to be over here in the West Coast where we're going to be having this atmospheric river still ongoing out here, still giving storm after storm with rain. The first little shot here is going to be Christmas Eve. Most of the East Coast during Christmas Eve is going to be covered in rain, wind, and also snow in those higher elevations. And then as it clears out for Christmas for a little bit, Southern West Coast, not seeing too much. The Northern West Coast, though, is getting a lot of wind, rain, and snow again with another system coming in for Christmas. It seems like you guys get a system almost every day. Here's on the 26th, you get another round of rain, wind, and snow yet again. Go into the later of the 26th. So now we're talking about two surges of moisture in one day on the 26th. 9 p.m., a lot of moisture, a lot of rain, a lot of snow, a lot of wind. We'll be going over that wind uh, uh, in just a moment. And then also the, the estimated uh, precipitation amounts. Going into the 27th, another Pacific storm comes in, brings in some more moisture, some more snow. Another little wave after that going into the 29th. And then hopefully after the 29th, we see some drier air and things kind of calm down. But man, this has been quite the wild ride for you guys there in the Pacific Northwest. I think we've talked about almost like 10 storms at this point. And it's only been like seven days. So uh, just continue to be hunkered down in there. I know it's probably some pretty depressing weather getting a little bit cooler there and it's rainy and just probably not very happy weather out there. So I feel bad for you guys, but uh, it does look like there might be a break on the way. Let's hope that holds on the models. Looking at our wind gusts across the country, we are going to have uh, storm after storm kind of bring those 30 to 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts along the coast, one after the other over here in the West Coast. Can have some gustier winds associated with this first round of rain and potential severe weather going into tomorrow and the next day uh, down here south of Oklahoma going in, just into Oklahoma maybe 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts same thing going on uh, up here in the northeast near the Great Lakes kind of near Erie and also Buffalo as well could get up into maybe some 40 mile per hour wind gusts there then that eventually calms down and then same there up in the Pacific Northwest as well and then as I continue to push this forward you can see that another wave of wind rain comes in there for Oregon and Washington, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds along the coast. Uh, same thing within the mountainous regions in the valleys as well. And then another round there again, looks like a little bit of more of an escalation of those winds further inland in some of the valley areas. And then another round on the end of this model as well. Not as windy, but definitely going to have some issues there. In terms of escalations of wind anywhere else, looks like uh, we could have, you know, once we go into like the end of the 26th and 27th, you know, you can definitely kind of see that damaging wind risk here in the southeast in the southern plains here, kind of going into the Ozarks associated with that severe weather. That's it that we talked about uh, having that possibility as we go into 26th, 27th, 28th. So definitely be looking out for wind out in front of the line and also along the line of thunderstorms that do end up developing there. And some of them could be severe. In terms of rain over the next five days, I do think this is a little bit of an underestimation here. But as you can see, I mean, Oh, there's a lot of rain with the highlighted area over here, kind of the bullseye of the most rain in this country is going to be right on that California, Oregon border where we could potentially see anywhere from, you know, seven, eight inches of rain to maybe even a little bit higher up there. So if you're watching out for some mudslides and some major flooding up there, definitely want to keep an eye on that. Also, some flooding issues could be possible with some of these thunderstorms as well down here uh, into parts of Texas, going into Arkansas, Oklahoma and northern Louisiana, anywhere from one to two Maybe some isolated spots of four to six inches of rain being possible uh, kind of here in the Texarkana area of the United States. And again, you know, it seems like I, like I said, I feel like almost every single forecast is a deja vu here. We're still talking about really dry over here in this portion of the United States and then also uh, kind of dry over here in the eastern portion of the United States. It looks like a lot of those storms kind of die off. I do think we can get some isolated spots, you know, of some heavier rain with if we still get some storms reconvect last Last moment there in like North Carolina and Virginia, maybe all the way down there in the South Carolina, Eastern Georgia, maybe Eastern Florida as well. But overall, it looks pretty dry. Last but not least is going to be those temperatures. So you can see it's still pretty cold out there. Still pretty cold. We're still talking, uh, you know, 15 to 20 degrees up there in the northeast and then uh, getting pretty close to negative degree temperatures there in the northern portion uh, of the United States over there near Minnesota. Uh, eventually, though, as we go into the 25th and then after Christmas, uh, we are going to be seeing a warm up. So 25th, we're going to start to see those 50s start to build up here into the central and northern plains, also moving into the southeast as well. 
you start to see that cooler temperatures there in the northern plains going into the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valleys are starting to warm up a little bit. Then as we go into the nighttime hours, into the early morning, you can see that warmth continues to surge up to the north. I mean, we're talking about 50s as far north as parts of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, going up into Nebraska, even South Dakota getting in on those 50s as well. And then eventually we get that little bit more of an organized system come in. Again, these things are like vacuums for air. All right. So uh, this one's going to be bringing a lot more warm air up to the north than cold air down to the south. So why we're going to see such an anomalously cold uh, kind of couple of, I mean, sorry, anomalously warm couple of days out here in the United States. And uh, and yeah, you see those uh, 50s and 60s are going to reach all the way up uh, into Michigan, southern Michigan, southern Wisconsin, getting up into Pennsylvania as well, really starting to warm up there in the northeast. I mean, we've been in the almost single digits throughout today, but as we go into the 28th, we're going to be talking about 20s, maybe even getting up into the 30s. And then look at this, almost the entire eastern half of the United States is dealing with 70, 60 degree temperatures, 50 degree temperatures, even making it as far north as South Dakota up there. So this storm is going to be mainly bringing in some warmer air out in front of it, but it is going to bring a little bit of cool air on the back side so it's not going to be all warmth but you can see almost immediately some more warmth pushes that cooler air back and says screw you it's <laughs> springtime uh but yeah uh I, I, as you can see as we go into uh portions of uh you know the early morning on the 29th and then pushing up into you know later in the day on the 29th it continues to be warm over here in the east coast and also in the central plains and it just doesn't stop it just keeps going and keep going until the foreseeable future we have to go all the way in January to see any more uh, organized intrusions of cold. I mean, this on the 8th. So we're talking about way into the future. So even in fantasy land, we can't really dream up any scenarios where there's a whole lot of cold air coming into the United States anytime soon. But all right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy this forecast. And I will uh, most likely see you guys after Christmas. I think Christmas Eve and Christmas, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break unless that severe weather does something surprising uh, in terms of, uh, you know, tornadoes uh, on the 24th and the 25th. Peace.